Well, youth in the border city are being ticketed, but it's not the kind of ticket you might expect. The city is jumping on board to recognize the good deeds of youth across our community. It's called positive ticketing. The campaign kicked off two months ago and is now in its final stages, wrapping up at the end of August. Beyond Borders Circle of Change brought together the campaign and says the event has been a success over the past two months. It kicked off at the beginning of summer and every place that got tickets was excited to get them and we actually had a few places ask for some more tickets so that was very exciting. Um, this is I think the third year that we've done positive ticketing so it's really starting to catch on in the community. Too often we hear of bad things and too often we see kids and youth doing the wrong things but you know they're out there by the droves doing good things and it's, uh, we ought to acknowledge them. The tickets are given to children and youth by community leaders. I found a couple of children in my neighborhood that were doing a couple of good things and uh, I was quick to uh, pass those coupons to them and they thought they had the world by the tail. Those ticketed can cash in for prizes at any of the local sponsors and all tickets must be given away by the end of the month. So youth, if you're listening, be sure to do those good deeds. <laughs> Well, it's that time of year again to start thinking of getting your kids ready to head back to school. Naram and Issa is taking a look at the three biggest things you need to prepare come this fall. Tonight, she brings us tips on how to have the perfect balance while making a healthy lunch. It's something parents seem to have a problem with only a short time into the school year. What to pack for lunch. Registered dietitian Heather Muller has many ideas as to what you can pack to make sure your kid is eating something healthy yet tasty. It's really important to provide all your nutrients and get the quality energy, the quality calories, because that's what's going to be fueling them to really get them learning well, to get their brains on to you know, high level functioning and not be sluggish throughout the day. Muller says lunches should have at least three of the four food groups. And when shopping for bread, one of the main things you should be looking for is the fiber content. Try just one of these pitas, for instance. So when you look at the fiber content here, you want anything over two grams of fiber. You can also do things like a sandwich and cut it with a cookie cutter and cut the bread into shapes or have your child create like a star with your sandwich. Just to add something else, that texture, the variety, um, really makes kids interested in lunch again. As for deli cuts, you should stay away from the salamis and pepperonis. They have a higher sodium count. Lean cuts such as turkey and chicken are best. For a healthy snack, veggies and fruit should always be included. If you're on the go, busy parents, which most parents are, these are great things that you can just keep in your fridge. Or else you can buy the full sizes of them and make something like this yourself. Sometimes these are a bit more costly, but they are still a great option. And if you are packing snacks such as granola bars or cookies, Muller says you should buy the ones higher in fiber to make up for the added fat. If you're getting that added benefit of the fiber, you know, it's something that they're going to eat, that they're going to enjoy. So be careful with it. You don't want to rely on these, but they're definitely something fun that you can add into their lunches. If you would like to talk to Heather more about diet and nutrition, you can call her at 780-874-0490. Naramanisa, New Cap News. And in tomorrow's Back to School feature, Naraman will take a look at some of the deals you can score when it comes to school supplies. Well, sometime in your life, it's likely you'll be involved in an emergency, and being prepared could be the difference between life and death. As Elise Cox explains, it's as simple as getting some training. We're going to just have a quick little scenario. Where we're These guys are learning about bone fractures in their standard first aid course, but most of them are here because they have to be. We live in a, in a province in an area where people are mandated by occupational health and safety to take first aid. But majority of the time, these people aren't going to use the first aid at the work site. They're going to use it with their family or friends. So while these men are lucky to walk away with a multifunctional skill, Amy hopes more people will see the importance of these courses. I'd love to see that change. I'd love to see a lot more ladies come in and take first aid. Mothers should take first aid, anybody that works um, in a service industry, because you never know when someone's going to choke or someone's going to get cut, or first aid in general could be needed. First aid covers any body injury, burns and CPR. 
and even a few improvised techniques you can adapt to many situations. You are likely sometime going to run into a situation where you're going to need to help somebody. Elise Cox, Newcap News. There's some curious new additions to the Border City Petting Zoo. Officials have been anxiously waiting, and as Mike Baden explains, after a lot of hard work and some money, the two Japanese snow monkeys are finally in their new home. After over two months of hard work, the cage is finally built and the monkeys have arrived. There's one three-year-old girl and a one-year-old boy, and the fan reaction so far has been great. Yeah, they actually are quite talented. It was really cool to see like them ride the swings and um, watch them. Um, I saw them fight, and that was pretty cool. Oh, the positive! It's been extremely positive. Yeah, extremely positive. Everybody's excited to see them. Monkeys are kind of an exciting animal. It's, they're they really move around a lot, and and especially for the kids, they're really eye catching. Uh, they see things moving moving fast, and and kids uh, really respond to that quite positively. And to Wallace, all the hard work is worth it to finally see the brother and sister running around. They're really cool. They're Japanese snow macaques, so they're 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 going to do fine uh, in our winters and stuff like that. They they're really a versatile monkey, so they're really quite quite good for for us anyway, for this zoo. After one full day in the cage, the monkeys are now settling in, but Wallace is keeping quiet on what might be the next big thing at the zoo. Always going to be surprises. Always going to be something new and exciting coming to the zoo. Mike Baden, Newcap News. Well, after a two-week break for the Olympics, Around the Region is back. Host Kayla Buchanan joins us from her ATR studio with a look at what's on tap for tonight's show. Kayla? Thanks. Coming up tonight at 7.30 on Around the Region, we have a great show, including we go to Fiddle Heaven with one of Canada's best. We get an update on the situation for the Battle River Ranch Camp. And in honor of the Summer Olympics, we profile one of the best track and field athletes in Saskatchewan. All that and more coming up tonight on Around the Region. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.